Well, good day to everyone, and um, thank you so much for taking a little bit of time out of your day to spend some time with us here at Manage Engine. Um, my name is Derek Melber, and I will be your moderator and speaker for the day. And uh, for those of you that have kind of been keeping um, tabs on us here in the 80 Solutions team, this is actually our third webinar in a series of four on securing it and protecting Active Directory. Um, for those of you that um, maybe have missed the first two, those are actually available from us um, in a live stream, so please email us and we can get you that link. For those of you that are returning, welcome back, and um, I hope that this third installment of the four will be just as um, interesting as the first two have been. Um, just some, um, I guess, overall logistics for our webinar. Um, this is being recorded. So you should be receiving a link to this recording in the next couple of days. Please keep an eye out for that. Um, second, um, if you do have any questions as we go through, um, there is not only myself, but also some other um, AD Solutions team members in the background answering questions. So if you do have any questions, please do not feel shy. Um, use your go to webinar panel, um, and you should be able to um, get those questions as we go through. Um, so um, those are some different things that we have. Um, I will mention that um, our fourth installment will be tomorrow at this exact same time. Um, so please come back and join us. Um, for those of you that really don't know who I am, let me give you a little bit of idea who's talking to you, to you today. Um, again, my name is Derek Melber. I am an Active Directory MVP. I've been an MVP for the last um, 17 years, both in Active Directory and in Group Policy. For those of you that don't know what the MVP program is, um, it is a Microsoft um, award that's given out yearly um, to those that um, don't work for Microsoft but add value to the Microsoft community, whether it be in education, webinars, seminars, speaking, and whatnot. Um, considering I do over 100 presentations around the world, I blog every single week on Microsoft, it only makes sense that um, I am actually um, an MVP. Um, but it's a great award and, and certainly um, something that I cherish. Um, for those of you that are listening, why is that beneficial to you? Well, um, believe it or not, I know a lot of people that are also MVPs and a lot of people that work for Microsoft. So if you do have any questions around Microsoft, specifically Active Directory, group policy, security, endpoint protection, and the like, um, send me your questions. That's my email address, and I'm more than happy to either answer them if I know the answer, or I can go dig up the answer for you. In the last couple of weeks, I've actually answered some pretty awesome questions that I didn't know the answer to by using my resources. So um, that's definitely a benefit for you. I also want to discuss a couple of resources that we have available online for you. Um, these resources are free, available to you, and easily accessible. Let me kind of show you where those are. Um, um, if you come here to our main landing page, um, manageengine.com, and you go to support and go to blogs, you'll see that we blog quite regularly. Um, here in the AD Solutions team, we actually blog um, about once a week, maybe twice a week, direct, if I could only type, right? Um, so if you come in here and do a search, um, you can actually search on specific things. This is synchronizing information between G Suite and AED. Um, here's securing and protecting active directory networks. Um, it's a variety of different things. We not only um, blog on information about our, our solutions, but also just in general about AD. So this is a great place for you to come. As you'll see here, most of the reads are less than five minutes. We know that um, your time is important, so we try to value that as much as possible with trying to get you information in a short amount of time. Another resource that I want to point out is also available off of our main landing page, but this one, if you hover over products and then go down to security hardening for Active Directory. This is a um, site that was built just about three years ago, and we're actually in the middle of revamping it to make it a little more um, obvious on how to use the information. But if you go to the bottom of this page, you'll see all of these blue bars, and these blue bars are geared towards different aspects of security in Active Directory, your Windows domain controllers, and your Windows servers. And what we do is we group them in blogs and videos and guide you through exactly what you need to do to secure that area around your Windows environment. Um, soon you'll be seeing a new layout for this, which will guide you through a five-step process, again, using blogs and videos, very streamlined, 
to get you from where you are to where you want to be with security and maintain that security over time. So those are some different resources that are available to you. One last resource I want to point out is throughout our website, you'll see this securing privileged access in Active Directory. Um, I'm actually going to give you your first action item um, for our webinar today. For those of you that will be attending tomorrow, our securing privileged access um, um, webinar, please download and read this before tomorrow just so you have a foundation of what we're going to go over tomorrow. Um, the, the, the book is more of a, a, a more of a quick read and quick guide where tomorrow's information is going to be a little more in-depth. So at least it'll get you the information more solidified in your head as we get to tomorrow. So, so those, those are some resources that are available to you. Um, I do want to talk briefly about our world tour. We are um, Deep in our second half of our world tour, um, I actually just got back from Saudi Arabia and uh, Bogota, Colombia um, with a user conference, and, and I leave late this week for um, Brazil, and I do a South America tour. Um, I know that my other team members are working diligently over in um, Asia and different parts of the world, so we've really grown our world tour, and this is a great opportunity for you to come see us live. Um, it, it, it is an amazing one half day event. We actually be in the United States coming up um, this next month and the month after that, and um, I think two uh, in four to six cities. Um, so please go to our events page, keep an eye out on our emails, come to these events. They are great ways for you to get additional information, talk with other people in your industry, talk to us, bring your questions. Um, I have yet to have one person leave one of my 80 seminars upset that the 80 seminar wasn't just absolutely outstanding and worth their time for a half a day. And again, it's a half a day, so we don't waste a lot of your time in terms of um, you, you not being able to be in the office. As an ex-administrator myself, I know that you have to get to the office, so a half day event kind of works for you. You can get to our event and get back to the office to get your primary work done. So please keep an eye out for that. As I mentioned, we are in phase three of our four-part series. Um, the first couple of um, AD securing, securing AD um, webinars that we did was basically kind of setting up, um, tracking and monitoring of changes. And then we went over endpoint security in the last iteration. And then today we're going to talk about securing insider threats. And then tomorrow we'll be talking about privilege to access. So when it comes to this idea of, of insider threats, I think it's important to get grounded on what we're talking about. Because an insider threat, in my opinion, is different than someone from the outside. Because they're on the inside, they actually have a, have a lot of access to information. So we actually must track and monitor the insider threat different than we track the threat from the outside. There is some overlap, but from the most part, it is different. So when we look at the makeup of an insider threat or attack, it's very difficult to know who we're looking at, similar to the external threat. But what I want to point out is an insider threat has a computer that's joined to the domain. So they have the upper hand on potentially getting information out of our network. But you can't really just look at someone and say, oh, they know a lot about computers, so they're a threat. Actually, someone that we don't know knows quite a bit about computers may be more of a threat than someone that knows quite a bit because maybe they're disgruntled, they have, um, they have a need or a desire to do damage or do something against the company. So when it comes to the idea of pinpointing someone, I actually try to stay away from this. I try not to look at a, a, an employee and say, oh, you're going to be a threat because we never know. What I would rather do because I don't know who it is, is really look at the technology within Active Directory, look at the behavior that's occurring through Active Directory in your Windows servers to try to find behavior that is malicious. So what we want to do is, first of all, discuss the, the concepts around privileged access, because really it's the privileges that are allowing the attacker to perform actions. If we if we were just to make every employee a standard user, the insider threat drops dramatically, almost to less than 5% effectiveness. So what 
have we done when we set up the users initially giving them privileges? Well, we might have placed them in a local group, so they may have a local group membership, specifically the administrators group on their desktop. Now, as another action item, now I've mentioned this action items twice to you. Let me describe what they are for those of you that haven't heard me before. Action items are things that I'm going to recommend that you do as soon as we're done here today. Because I can't go over everything in detail, so I'm going to give you things, kind of homework, that I want you to do after we're done. So another action item is for those of you that actually have users in your environment that are local administrators, I'm going to suggest you do a little bit of research and you go research software that's been available for years, over 10 years, that allow you to take the user out of the local administrators group, but still function that application. So please go look that up. Now, another thing that we give to users when they are initially created is membership and active directory groups. Now, hopefully we're not giving them the full reins of the environment, such as domain admins and enterprise admins. However, we we are still giving some users privileged access over some things. Now, this might be an application, it might be um, help desk, it might be managers, who knows exactly what it is, but we place users in groups, and because they're in that group, they immediately have privileges. But there are other ways that users get privileges that they, they can leverage to attack us internally. They might be added to an access control list. The access control list might be for a database, and then they can get into the database without um, hesitation. They may have user rights. With user rights, maybe they can back up files and folders. Even though they don't have permission to the files and folders, they can back them up. And then, of course, um, m many ways that users get elevated privileges is stolen credentials. They may hijack. Um, they may guess someone's password. Um, they may you know, try to use some kind of a pass the hash attack. Who knows, there's too many options here, but this is another way that someone gets elevated privileges. Now, I don't wanna go detailed into the privilege part of this because we're gonna do that tomorrow, but I just want you to keep in mind that the majority of successful attacks and threats come from employees that have privileges. So what we need to do is make sure that we know who has privileges and we wanna protect that. Now. What can we do to detect an insider threat or attack? Well, first of all, we must know who has privileges. That helps us. Second of all, we want to monitor. We want to monitor the behavior of virtually every user in the environment. Let me give you some examples. So let's say that there are five members of the domain admin staff. Four of them are working today, but one is on vacation. Wouldn't it be good to know if the one employee, the IT domain admin that's on vacation, if someone is trying to hack into their account with, and getting failed logons? That seems like it's a pretty important thing that we must actually look at. Now, let's look at another scenario. Let's say that um, we have an executive, maybe the, the CEO or CSO or CTO, and their account is constantly getting locked out. We go to them and they're like, I'm not locking my account. I know what my password is. Everything is great. Well, this may be some behavior that someone internally is trying to guess the password for a C-level person and their account's getting locked out and they're going to continue to try to get in. So monitoring becomes a very important way that we can actually see things that are happening. But we also need to look at things that really don't change that often, but we want to get an alert when it changes. For example, let's jump to the third bullet there. Modified group membership. How often does your domain admins group change membership? Well, probably not very often. So what we want to do is we want to track when this group changes membership. And we want to monitor that and be alerted to that. Because someone, if successful getting into Active Directory, possibly could be changing the domain admins membership to add themselves in, and now they have the ultimate capability around the domain. The same thing fits with ACLs, access control lists. This could be for files, folders, or actually inside of Active Directory. And we also want to look for newly created user accounts. Now, I went over this last time with regard to endpoints, but it not only refers to endpoints, but also within Active Directory. Often when an insider wants to be able to move throughout the environment 
without being detected, they want to create a user account, maybe that has privileges. Their account still doesn't have any privileges, but now they can log on as someone else. Because it's a normal user account, no one knows about it. So this could be a local account. It could also be a domain account. So we really need to monitor when accounts are created. And obviously in the domain, they're created quite often. But at the local level, they're not created that often at all. Now, another thing that we need to detect are common attacks. Now, when we talk about common attacks, we need to um, think about different ways that we've been attacked in a Windows environment in the past, such as passwords being attacked, authentication protocols being taken advantage of, like LAN Manager and NTLM. If we look at, at most of the um, recent attacks that are out in the wild, you know, the Verizons and the Facebooks and stuff like this, a lot of these are because we didn't patch, right? We didn't look at the vulnerabilities and patch them. So the attacker goes in, determines that the vulnerability is still open, and they expose that vulnerability. So we need to patch often. We also need to secure users when they're coming into Active Directory and when they're leaving Active Directory. Because every user within Active Directory has read access to the Active Directory database, they can get quite a bit of information about accounts that haven't been logged on, accounts that um, are deprovisioned securely. So what we need to do is we need to patch some of these things up. So these are some obvious things that we need to approach and looking at the insider threat and the attacks that might be coming through, okay? All right. So what I want to do first is I want to take a look at some of these common things that I feel organizations overlook that we need to address. Now, again, I only have 45 minutes of your time today. There's no way to go into every possible permutation. That's why we have the security hardening site. What I want to do is fill in some gaps or some things that I think are a little obscure, and I want to get your brain thinking about the, the overall picture of security. So I want to talk about authentication protocols. Now, when we talk about authentication protocols, and I'm going to jump one slide ahead here, you will see that authentication protocols from Microsoft include Kerberos, NTLM version 2, NTLM, and LAN Manager. Now, NTLM and LAN Manager have been known to be bad authentication protocols for years. Don't just believe me. Let's look at what Microsoft says about these authentication protocols. I pulled this off the web just six months ago, directly from Microsoft's site, okay? And it says that Microsoft is aware of detailed information and tools that might be used for attacks against these two authentication protocols. Microsoft recommends that to reduce this, we recommend that you configure environments to allow the use of NTLM v2 only. Okay, that sounds great, right? How do you do this? If you do do this, what are the possible ramifications or consequences? So what we need to do as administrators is, first of all, understand what we have, what the possibilities are, and then configure the environment for the best possible secure environment. Now, first of all, we have to know if we're supporting LAN Manager and NTLM. How do we do that? Well, let's jump into the operating system, and I'm going to walk you through some things, okay? Everything that I'm showing you here is going to be recorded and available to you, plus it's all available from that security hardening site. Now, what I want to do first is I want to go to my domain controller, and I want to run a command that's built into every single domain controller to see if we are currently supporting LAN Manager and TLM. Now, the command that I'm going to run is called secpol, S-E-C-P-O-L dot M-S-C. It's a built-in command. You don't have to do anything to get this thing there. Run it from one domain controller per domain. Once you run secpol, it's going to give you a result telling you what you have for authentication protocols. So here under our local policy security options, about two-thirds of the way down, you will see land manager authentication level. Now, you will see it says send NTLM v2 response only. All right. Now, this seems like we're supporting NTLM v2 only. But now what we need to know is what are the possible options. We know what we're set to. Now we have to know what the possible options are. So now I'm going to jump into group policy 
and I'm going to show you what the possible options are. I'm just going to pick any GPO here. I'm going to go to that same setting that we were just under in SecPol. Go down here, um, Land Manager Authentication Level, and you will see that there are um, six possible options. Anywhere from send NTLM responses down here to refuse Land Manager. Now you'll notice that our setting is right here. If the bottom two say refuse, are we refusing Land Manager and NTLM? No, we're not. So that means we're still supporting it. Even though the one above says send those responses only, this has to do with the authentication. All right? So what we want to do, if possible, is we want to set our domain controllers to refuse Land Manager and NTLM. But this may not be possible. Well, why? Well, Land Manager and NTLM are older authentication protocols. Actually, Land Manager was created for Windows 3.11, Windows for Workgroups. So that was a long time ago. But many applications are developed to support Land Manager and NTLM because it's more work to support NTLM v2 or Kerberos. So if we have applications or services that are still running using Land Manager and NTLM, we can't deny it completely. Because if we deny it completely, now we are going to break that aspect of land manager and NTLM, and now those services and applications won't function. So what I recommend you do is you actually go into a tool such as AD Audit Plus, and with AD Audit Plus, you can actually look at logon activity. And with looking at logon activity, and let's go in, um, you'll see that some of my information is a little stale because of um, I'm using a backup computer today, and I apologize for that. But hopefully we can dig into our database here, get some information, and I can show you how to do this. Oh, I'm looking for James Bond. Sorry, hold on. Let's go to not um, – let's go to log on activity based on DC. Excellent. Here we go. Now, you will see that I have login activity being tracked, plus I can actually go in and look at particular information, and I can look at the logon service. Now, the logon service is going to tell me if it was Kerberos, Windows Authentication. It'll tell me the logon services. So by adding this in, and I'm pretty sure that I do not have anything that's older, historical, you'll see everything's Kerberos here that I can search to see if I'm using other than Kerberos for authentication or NTLM v2. If I am using that, that means that at least one user on one computer is using an older authentication protocol. Now, another thing you can do is you can actually set up alerts telling you if these other logon services are being used. So what I'm going to recommend is you have to do a little research. Because it's hard to know, obviously, if someone is logging on using NT or NTLM. That's why I'm showing you this type of report, which shows you the activity over time of this type of behavior. Okay? So we need a tool that can help us expose this information. And again, the logon service here won't show Kerberos or NTLM v2. It'll show NTLM or Windows authentication. So now that we have a tool, that can help us determine if we need it, now we can move forward. So we know that we're supporting Land Manager and NTLM. We know if we need it or not, now we know what to do next. If we do not have any Land Manager and NTLM authentications, we can go into group policy and refuse Land Manager and NTLM. I showed you how to do that. But what if you are supporting land manager and NTLM. What can you do to help protect your environment? Well, here's where we can actually take advantage of some of the limitations on land manager and NTLM. We're going to take advantage of the links. Do you know that a land manager and NTLM password can only be 14 characters as a maximum? If you put in a 15 character password, land manager and NTLM fail because they do not support passwords greater than 14 characters. So let's go back to our scenario. 
if we go in and we see that we have land manager and NTLM, we know which accounts are using them, we can go to every other account, force a password greater than 14 characters. Let's say 15, that's better than 14, because we're going to break land manager and NTLM. But the accounts that are using the older authentication pro protocol, we allow them to use a 14 character password. We are reducing the attack surface dramatically by doing this, which is the overall goal. Our goal is to help protect the environment wherever possible. Okay? So, with NTLM and Land Manager, here's some different things. Use passwords greater than 14 characters whenever possible, it breaks it. Determine if NTLM and Land Manager are being used. I show you how to do that. Don't store the NTLM password hash. Ah, where's that at? Well, go back into our group policy. Okay? And here was our land manager authentication level. Go two settings above it, and it tells you whether or not you're storing the land manager hash. This says, do not store, and I've had enabled, so I'm not storing the land manager hash. Believe it or not, this is by default starting with Windows Server 2003 SP1. Okay? So I just want you to check this. Make sure that you're not storing the land manager hash. Restrict the use of land manager and NTLM for some users. You can actually do that. My recommendation is just do it by setting a password greater than 14 characters. Then the, the, the great option is to disable NTLM and land manager completely. And I showed you how to do that. That's right here in group policy. I showed you how to verify the settings are correct. And I showed you how to actually go in and make those settings stick for your domain controllers. This is the proper way to secure land manager and NTLM in your environments to help protect against your insider threats taking advantage of these weak protocols. That's the whole point. These are very difficult things to see and to track, but with the right tools and the right knowledge, it actually becomes pretty easy and, um, to implement and track down. Okay? Now, I also want to talk about authentication protocols with regard to recent password attacks, such as password hashes and tickets. The number one thing that Microsoft is concerned about today with regard to authentication protocols and passwords is pass the hash, pass the ticket, the golden ticket. There's many different names for these things, okay? Now, my recommendation, if you've never heard of these, another action item, go to this third bullet and read the white papers there. They're written by Microsoft. They are very good. They detail what a pass, pass the hash and pass the ticket attack is. They also give you a punch list, 15 to 20 items that you need to do inside of your environment to help secure against pass the hash and pass the ticket. The one thing to keep in mind is you cannot 100% negate pass the hash and pass the ticket. These attacks, if a computer's online, can potentially be used because of the nature of the attack. So you need to go in and reduce the attack surface to make these attacks so difficult, the attacker is going to move somewhere else before they're successful. Okay? Know the basics. Know how to reduce these types of attacks. Know how to go in and configure against these. Right? I've actually done some past the hash blogs out on our blog site a couple of years ago, so please go search for those as well. But honestly, Go read these Microsoft white papers on pass the hash and pass a ticket. They are exceptional. All right? Excellent. So to summarize what's in those white papers, what can we do? Don't give users local administrator privileges. It was the very first thing we talked about today. I went over how you can do this. Okay? Two, ensure the local administrator account on every endpoint has a unique password. Microsoft has a tool to do this. It's called LAPS, Local Administrator Password System. Okay? We in Adiana Plus can report all the computers that are using LAPS. So it's a combination to make sure that you have it in place and it's being used. Don't allow users with elevated privileges to log on throughout the network. This is your help desk. These are your developers. These are your administrators. 
because what the way that pass the hash works is it breaks into one computer, gets the credentials, and then laterally and upward moves throughout your environment using that hash, and if they've logged on, they can get access to those other machines. Negate internet browsing with privileged accounts. Please utilize security through Internet Explorer, whichever browser you're using. Um, Microsoft does a really good job with this, um, with, with Internet Explorer, with the right settings. Again, I've blogged on that. So go to those blogs and see exactly how to set them up. If you can't find the blogs, you have my email. Email me, and I will send you directly to the blog. These things are important to help you reduce the effectiveness of the inside attack. Force changing of passwords often. Yes, that means you, the administrator, and your developers, and your service accounts, and your users. You need to have solutions in place to help you with this. Even a medium-sized organization needs tools to help them with this. Get the tools that are going to help you be successful to make sure that users and service accounts, admins included, change their passwords often. This is one of the best things you can do to help promote good security to protect against these attacks. All right. With privileged escalation attacks, this is where someone inside is actually escalating to then attack the environment. Okay. This is similar to what we're going to talk about tomorrow, but yet a little bit different. Okay. First, you need to know on a workstation when someone creates a new user account. Now, let me walk you through a scenario, okay? The scenario is this. I have a thousand endpoints all running Windows um, Professional, okay? Not one of those computers has a user that's part of the local administrators group. So they're all standard users on their desktop. If a user is created on one of those endpoints, isn't that a major deal? First of all, who created it? How was it created? The administrators don't want any users in local administrators, and the users can't do it. We're potentially under attack. So what you need is you need solutions that allow you to know when a user is added to a local administrators group. We want to know if users are created and we want to know if groups are modified. Recently added members to a group. These reports give you insight into what's happening on your endpoints. We reviewed it last week, we're going to talk about it tomorrow, and we're talking about it today. These all tie together with endpoint security, insider threats, outsider threats, privileged access, but without a tool telling you when these accounts are created, you have no idea and you're going to be attacked and didn't even know it was coming. Okay, So we need to know when new users are created on the workstation and when the local administrators group changes on that workstation. We also need to know when changes occur to user rights. Now when we talk about user rights, I'm going to go back to our friendly little tool here, SecPol because it's an easy way to see the configurations. You can run this on any Windows machine. Go under your local policies, user rights. You will see that there are over 35 user rights that are configurable, and these indicate who can perform what actions on that machine. You'll notice here that some of them relate to backup files and directories. Some of them are related to restore files, shut down the system, right? Um, modify the access token, create a token. These are important things. We need to know when these change. These are privileges that could be at your workstation and or your servers and even domain controllers. We need to know if they change because if we go back to our initial list, these are things that, that could change to give someone privileges. We also need to track access through Active Directory. We need to track repetitive fail logons. We need to know when someone's account is under attack. We need to know when someone is locked out. We need to know recent lockouts. We need to be able to go into a tool to see when someone is locked out and see the behavior. One of the great tools that we have in our solution is here under 
our reports for Active Directory and our user management. We have a tool here called Account Lockout Analyzer. Now, let's see if I have any lockouts. And not only can you see the user that's locked out, you can actually go look at the details. We give you information about, about how things are configured on their machine, recent logons, whether it's a local logon, maybe it's OWA, right? So what we're doing is we're giving you a view of where they possibly could have logged on, as well as we give you the history of the logons, not only directly into Active Directory, but also throughout all those different environments. So we're giving you local logons, we're giving you OWA, maybe it's a radius logon. The reason for this is because of the multitude of devices and the ways that users can authenticate, they use cache credentials. And many of these options have a schedule or a heartbeat to make sure they authenticate, and if the password is wrong, after three or four password being incorrect, they're going to lock out the account. So this allows you to see that for troubleshooting. It's also important to know if we are under attack. So these are some important things, okay? Group modifications, we talked about that. My recommendation is for you to have something in place that if this occurs, now I want you to see this, right? I'm going to go into Active Directory, Users and Computers. I am going to be an attacker. So what I want to do is I want to give myself, BART, access to domain admins. So I go down here, right? Somehow I got in and I have elevated privileges, but I want to go to the domain admins group and I want to add myself in. So I add myself in. Immediately what I want you to see is I want you to see that you receive, notice right here there's an alert. This alert can be an email or an SMS directly to your phone. No matter where you are in the world, you can be notified that BART was added to domain admins. This is one of the most powerful insider threats. And I see it over and over again where organizations are not tracking their groups. You have to track them in real time. AD Audit Plus can do that in real time. Super simple, okay? The same with ACL modifications. ACL modifications are an active directory can allow the creation of users, creation of groups, modification of groups, um, changing of passwords. All of these delegations relate to AD access control lists. You have to be tracking these. AD Audit Plus has a built-in report to do this. You'll see that I have a built-in report that automatically tells me if my OU's per permissions change. So I can go back in time and I can see this. Obviously, I also have a alert set up with this and I can see any time that an access control has changed. I see the new ACL, I see the old ACL, and I see what's changed in that access control list. The power of a tool that gives you this information gives you control over security in your environment. Same as user rights, we talked about those. Now, at a different level, we also have to worry about file access control lists and file access. We have a built-in component to AD Audit Plus just dealing with files. You can go in and you can see server-based reports, user-based reports, share-based reports. All of these things allow you to see when someone goes into your file system, accesses something they shouldn't be accessing, changes something that shouldn't be changed, or anything in between. These are ways that you need to set up your environment to know when someone inside is trying to get to something they shouldn't have access to. Whether that be through a group change, a user creation, modified group, ACLs, user rights, delegation, any of those permutations, you must have a system in place that's walking you through in the background, alerting you on when these things are changing. So in this short amount of time, I walked you through some examples of what you need to look at. I showed you exactly how to run reports to know what you have. I described how to analyze what the possibilities are, specifically with land manager and NTLM. Then I showed you how to configure them correctly. And the most important thing, how to set up monitoring and alerting if those things change. Knowing 
what your current environment is, is the best way to secure your Active Directory environment. So what am I going to leave you with? Here's what I'm going to leave you with. I'm going to give you all a challenge, okay? Everyone likes a good challenge. What I want you to do is I want you to go to our main landing page, and I want you to have a stopwatch, okay? Use your phone, use whatever it is, and I want you to start it as soon as you click on products. And here's what I want you to time. I want you to go to products, Adiata Plus, download. I want you to download Adiata Plus, install it, and configure it, and get an alert. Just one alert. I just want you to get one alert. Less than 30 minutes. I promise you, less than 30 minutes. This is such a lean and mean solution. So lightweight, but powerful. I am giving you over 125 predetermined reports that as soon as your 30 minutes are up, all of these things start to report back to you. Group policy changes, OU changes, group changes, any of the above, logons, it's all there. 30 minutes. Tell me another solution that you can download, install, and configure, and in 30 minutes start to get reports and all that. I challenge you to do that too. Find another one, okay? So I hope this has been valuable to you. Tomorrow we're going to go over specifically privileged access, how you need to check what you have, configure, monitor, and alert, okay? I want to thank you for your time. I know your time is valuable. I want to thank my colleagues for answering the questions as they came through. That is my email address. If you have questions, email me. You can also email the events team at AD Solutions. All of us just wait for emails to come through to answer your questions. It actually is kind of silly, but we really enjoy that part of our job. This is being recorded. Keep an, e um, an eye out for your email. I hope all of you can come back and join us tomorrow for our fourth and final um, installment of securing Active Directory. Um, and that wraps it up. I'm going to let you get back to work. So for Derek Melber, on behalf of the rest of the 80 Solutions team, thank you for your time. Have a great rest of your day, and I hope to see all of you tomorrow. Thank you.